Hey, Matt here, back with another 200 Zoom Play and Explain. Today, I want to focus a little bit on bluff catching. As you probably noticed over the past few months, I've been incorporating more and more exploitative elements into my game. And when you node lock and solver villain over bluffs one combo, it'll call all bluff catchers. And if you node lock villain under bluffs one combo, it will fold all bluff catchers. So is it really ever that close and worth RNGing or thinking about blockers in river bluff catching spots? I mean, maybe sometimes if the ranges are tight or the blockers are just so good that it'll throw off the ratios. But even then, you don't need to RNG. It's just going to be a pure call, a pure fold. And as long as we're playing humans, people will never be perfectly balanced on the river. They're, they're going to be over or under bluffing. So that's going to be the focus today. And uh, with that, let's uh, get started. Has anybody went through the new course by Yuri Pelik on Upswing? If so, I'd love to uh, hear your comments below. People too will bet range here. I wonder if this is a spot where we actually could incorporate a block size on the turn. Usually I don't use two sizes, but this low board with the one high card feels like it, it would be nice to, to have that. But since I'm not really sure, I'll check, but I'll look at that later. One thing I do want to say about RNGing, though, is oftentimes people say you don't really need to RNG because it's just so clear that one option is better than the other. But I don't know if that's necessarily true. Um, let's just take flop C bet for example. Uh, a lot of people just want to bet range because they say, oh, well, the river exploits are going to be bigger on the river when you bet small flop. Um, and it just simplifies your strategy, whatever. But people make so many mistakes in the delay notes that I don't think it's clear that one size is necessarily, or like betting range is necessarily higher EV than checking pack. Um, low board. I think betting bigger is probably okay. It's weird. Sometimes these low boards, it will still, several will still bet small. I think what there's the fact there's a lot of pair plus draw. I don't mind that. Small blind call here. Yeah, so you just give up now on top right.
uh, probably on a check on this board. It's usually the way that I construct my seabedding range is I first think about okay, what size do I want to use, and then how much of a checking range I want to use. And if I want to have a big checking range, then I need to check range check a lot uh, of like bluffs and just like thin value and whatnot. So um, yeah, here it goes check check. I guess rolling high is probably good to bet. It's a good river. Probably overbetting. I mean, overbetting when we have almost the nuts is usually good, but I think especially now since we don't block the calls, so. Speaking of multi-way pots, I was actually thinking about potentially getting snowy. I know a lot of people don't like snowy because of the ranges and the sizes and whatnot, but just something easy to look at multi-way pots, uh, mainly because you obviously could get simple three-way and run it, but it just takes a long time, and just to have that option, I think would be would be neat. Um, here, this is I don't really know. I'm gonna call, but I'm obviously not happy because it's a recreational raising the flop, and we only have a gutter. But maybe our ace could be good, so that gives us at least some additional equity. So I don't think we can fold on the flop right away. timed out there but I don't even remember what the hand was and then I guess we just call and... nice oh yeah <laughs> the multi-way one but yeah I don't know if anybody watching has played around with it and if it would be worthwhile to get it kind of sucks that you can really only buy an annual plan there's no monthly option Uh, 57, I guess we'll board that. Why not? It's a limp pot. No clue how much I'm supposed to stab, but 
I would assume it's generally good. Battling Nookie today, it seems, every hand. Definitely used to some interesting sizings, whether that's small or huge or raising. It definitely takes some weird lines. But I'm pretty sure he's winning, so. So just because it's a weird line doesn't necessarily mean it's not plus EV. We haven't really had a chance for a river bluff catch yet, have we? Some funny things about that player. Some of the discords. size would be best to be honest especially the fact that we're deep that's something that I'm uh, trying to do now is run some scripts for deep spots because I feel like the edge there to be gained is huge obviously make no mistake uh, I could still Improve a lot 100 BB. I mean, who who couldn't? But in terms of like, how much better am I going to get at 100 BB versus, you know, looking at deep sims? I think there's just way more win rate to be gained looking at deep. I think here I could still overbet. I mean, if we have 9x, we're still good, and there's a chance there is some 8x in in positions. Wow. Uh, so this is our first kind of river buff getting spot. So the reality of the situation is <laughs> I'm going to fold and I know we have great blockers, but I just think and I think data would suggest this that when I overbet and villain races in position, it's underbluffed. But obviously we have unreal blockers there. I'll look at that later for sure. Oh, I don't think we need to bet here. Uh, I think we have value bet.
Wonder about the size here, table one. See, I've been, I've been thinking about this spot a lot lately, actually. And it's spots where our hand would prefer to check raise or bet small re-raise. And it's an interesting spot because in position generally will over bluff in a bet check bet spot, for example. But with their value, they don't necessarily bet call that always. Or there's a chance that they don't even thin value bet enough. So I actually wonder if in a spot like this, even though maybe overbet may never really be a thing. Or maybe it is a thing, I don't know. But let's just pretend that it isn't for this example. Maybe in practice it actually is better for the reasons of are they really going to bet call enough or raise enough when we block so maybe in retrospect i would have actually preferred to just bet a bigger size myself but curious uh what you might think of that Two hundred BB. What do we do there? <laughs> probably three bet. I probably should have not have folded up. Something I've also been doing is experimenting with bigger check raise sizes, but I think here uh, smaller is fine. Also, it's like top bottom is called more than I think. I don't even remember what I rolled, but I got excited because I'm facing my nemesis. That's actually something I'm trying to work on as well. It's just like timings. I didn't think too much of it, but I honestly think that there is uh, there is a lot of potential tells that you give away. best strategy I could use there. Probably a bunch of things. So this seems fine. Small sizes, it's usually good to raise. Eh, why not? I had some reasonable properties to do it with. Multi way. Might be overdoing it there with the ace nine, but I don't think it's that bad. All right, let's 
see if we can win a win a hand versus Nucky for Woods. Not many hands, but I still think it'll be worth worth posting just because not every session has a bunch of hands, even if it's a little bit boring. I think I touched on a few interesting topics. Roll tie. That's a really, really, really big size. That's a really big size. I think we can maybe fold sevens versus that huge size. Hmm. I guess he's thinking out of position to have way more do sex, so maybe the two maybe that size actually is a thing. But then versus that size I suppose I probably don't have to call. Call, call. I think when it checks around twice, I don't mind just going bet bad. I mean, if they find calls, they find calls, but I, I really think it's pretty unlikely that either one of these players has a king. Twenty-eight. We'll check. Check. If he were to bet, I think easy fault. Sorry, not talking too much this video, but I don't really know what else more to say in some of these hands. It's flop a nine. check on this flop probably could do anything it comes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video it's hard to know you'd have to like node lock every single turn every single river to actually figure out what the most optimal strategy would be to play the flop but 
Uh, it's probably easier just to say, okay, whatever, I'm just going to RNG it, and there's probably going to be EB in both lines, so. And maybe it makes sense to have this hand in both lines. Or 10 fives to cut off that actually might be a fold. Right, I think what we're going to do is we're going to uh, hit the set our next big blinds. As we are getting close. Uh, We're deep here. It's nice, uh, nice flop deep. <laughs> See, I wonder here, like in general, I don't have many flop raises uh, to the same position, but I've never really studied deep, and I know it's only five hands, but 50-50 is. Uh, See, I don't know if I maybe, maybe fast played that. That was bad. Curious what you think. I mean, 200 big blinds deep on a board that could change a lot. I mean, I don't hate having the raise there, but at the same time, I, I usually hate on other regs for raising in position, mainly because I don't think they do it properly. Eight. I feel like we should bluff this. Donk flop. Question is how much nothing does he have that we could just check check and win? I think there's some there's some EV in just check checking and winning, but the question is is it higher EV to bet than check? And I think it's close. I think when in doubt, you probably should just bet. Let's, uh, this small pool this, this Saturday afternoon. All right, let's uh, take a look how we did this session. Not bad. There wasn't uh, too, too many interesting hands. There was a couple that I would like to look at, like for example, this, this one, sorry, I'm cutting it off here. This uh, Ace-10 one is interesting. Uh, even this one, the turn strat, head flop strat. 
that was the main ones. But yeah, uh, as always, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Any mistakes, feel free to uh, write them in the comments. That's, that's how I improve. That's one of the reasons why I'm making these. But yeah, until next time, good luck at the tables. Talk to you soon.